Welcome back to my channel, everyone. Three tips here. The time has come to harvest the silver cell. I've already taken the filter off of here. This is a close-up shot of our pure silver crystal that we've grown in the electrolytic silver cell. It's high purity silver. It took about 10 days to grow this silver. Now what we're gonna do is use our spatula and scrape the silver down off the sides of the bowl. Now we'll transfer the silver to this beaker. Now we'll add the electrolyte from the silver here into this beaker. A little bit of silver will go over with it. That's quite all right. We're going to use this electrolyte a second time after we augment it with a little bit more silver. I have a five gallon bucket that I'm using to cement the silver out of my solutions. I've got some distilled water in this jug right here. And what we'll do is we're gonna give the silver now that's in this jar multiple distilled water rinses until we get all the electrolyte off of here. What I'll do is just kind of shake these around in here. You can see the electrolyte is still blue. Or the liquid is going to be blue because there's electrolyte in here. I'm just going to pour this off now into this five gallon bucket that's got copper in it. And we'll cement out any silver that's coming, being poured out here with the electrolyte. Usually takes about six of these rinses to get all the electrolyte off of the silver. Distilled water rinse number three.
Normally it takes just six rinses to get all the electrolyte off, but I'm gonna give it seven here, just for good measure, just to make sure that we've got all of the silver nitrate electrolyte rinsed off of our silver. Let's draw a sample of this seventh rinse water off into a small beaker. Now we'll add some hydrochloric acid to this rinse water. And uh, it should stay crystal clear if all of the silver nitrate electrolyte has been rinsed off of it. And I don't see any silver chloride forming in here. So that's a good indication that our silver has been rinsed free of the silver nitrate electrolyte. Now we're gonna add the silver that we've rinsed to a dish here. Here we go, we're gonna dry the silver off now using a hot plate. Here we are, I've got the silver dried off in about the 12 years I've been doing this. This has never happened. I think I got the pan too hot in an effort to speed things up and it discolored the silver on this end of the bowl. That's the only thing I think of. I just got it too hot, trying to go too fast. Let's see what we got for a weight on this now. Looks like we've got, what is that? 3,252 grams minus 1,666 for the container. This is a book that I use for reference, Silver Economics, Metallurgy and Use, authored, edited by Allison Butts. She's the author, I believe. And uh, if you look on page nine of this book, up here it says, until the 16th century, the air was pure and did not affect silver, but the use of coal and later mineral oil and coal gas for lighting and heating put sulfurous gases into our atmosphere, into the air, and tarnishing of silver resulted. So people have asked, does silver tarnish pure silver? According to this book, the sulfurous gases in the air will cause pure silver to tarnish. That's 3,000. 252 minus the weight of the pan 1366 so we've got 1886 grams of pure silver in our container what I'll do is I've got a clean beaker here I've got the scale set for troy ounces what we'll do is measure out three troy ounces of our silver here Three point three troy ounces. What we'll do now is cover this up and get it out of the way. About twelve years of refining. I've never had this happen. Of course, when I'm trying to re record a video, I get something like this happening. It might be due to some electrolyte that was still on the silver crystal. Might I rinse it off too hastily and not done a thorough job there? Seven rinses sort of should have took care of it, but uh, anyway, we'll get this out of the way now. All right, if you look here, this is my electrode bar that I've used in my silver cell 
for probably a year and it finally ate its way through the the wire so what we're going to do is use the uh, three ounces the three and a half troy ounces that we just weighed out and make a new electrode bar for my silver cell I have a roll of 10 gauge wire that I bought at a yard sale for two dollars what I'm going to do is measure out a length of it that's about three feet in length which is about right here now we'll cut that off at three feet now I'll bear the uh, end here for about six inches or so coil this up to a nice little coil Be easier to work with when it's coiled up I've got the piece of wire and a clamp now what I'm going to do is grab a piece of it down here and form a little loop like so if you look here I've got the little curl of copper wire suspended in one of the cavities of a graphite mold and what we're going to do now is I'm going to add the silver that we measured out it's about 3.3 troy ounces that's more than we'll need but I need an extra amount to uh, cover up that piece of copper wire I'm going to add it to the melt dish and now what we'll do is melt this silver and we'll pour it around the copper wire Now that I have the silver molten, what I'm going to do is pull the copper wire out of the way and start heating my mold with another torch. I'm going to tilt the dish to get the pieces of silver that haven't gone molten yet to coalesce into a single mass down in that melt dish. Here comes the tricky part. I'm gonna put the wire back in the mold cavity now. I, and then once I do that, I've gotta pour the silver right away or else the piece of copper wire will melt on me. Get it down in there, get it hot. Now we take our torch and we're gonna pour the bar into the red hot copper wire and it should weld right to it, just like that. Nice little piece of silver left in the uh, in the melt dish there. It'll harden up and freeze up, and then we'll get that out of there. goes see it freezing up let's get in there and grab it I want it to stick to the dish which it has a tendency to want to do is our little button of silver that we had left over then of course here's our uh, 
our bar, our electrode bar for our silver cell. And uh, we'll cool that off in this container of water also. Alrighty, here we go. We've got our new electrode bar for the silver cell. It's welded right in to this bar of silver, probably about three to eight ounces. It's about uh, three feet long. What I can do is just bare the end up here, this other end, connect that to my power supply. And we've got a little button of silver left over. I'll stamp that with three tips and we'll offer this on my eBay store. Okay, this will conclude the video. Here's my new anode electrode bar for the silver cell. Here's the piece of silver. We'll put that on my eBay site and offer that for sale. And uh, I'll try to make up a couple more of these and get these listed on my eBay site, these anode electrode bars, and offer them, them for sale as well. This will conclude the video. Thank you for watching.